What's happening, Tim? What's going on? Well, I'll tell you. I've been looking for a bigger CNC router so I can make bigger animal huts and many other things. I'm looking for a machine big enough to put a whole sheet of material on top and cut it up with tremendous precision. But big CNC machines cost big money and I have a tiny budget. So I was considering building one from scratch. But <laughs> I don't really know anything about them. I can operate my CNC machines fine, but I'd never built one. I bet you can operate a CNC machine too. For instance, your printer at home is a CNC machine. Did you know that? <laughs> it's just a machine that is controlled by a computer. There are all sorts of CNC machines and they're all brilliant. And you don't need to know exactly how they work. You just need to know how to use the software programs that come with them. So, um, hold that up, yep. What's that say? Ext 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 extreme Plasma. Well done, Extreme Plasma. Thank you so much. Look what they sent. All this stuff. What do you think? Is it all important? <laughs> Seems to be an awful lot of it. There's some, some things. I look like little motors and nuts and bolts and other things plenty of other things including I think this is probably the most important bit the controller the so anyway as I say I was reluctant to spend lots of money I didn't have on parts and trying to put them together I could save money that way but would my would my machine ever actually work look everyone I've built a really cheap CNC machine all by myself that's great, Tim. Does it work? Well, no, not really, but it was cheap. But then I had an idea. I was looking at my lovely plasma machine and thinking, what well, wouldn't that do if it was bigger? If it had a router on it instead of a plasma cutter? It's an excellent, sturdy XYZ table with all the motors and the controllers, so it can do the things I need, which is um, moving the head up and down and sideways and back and forth and that's what I need just bigger please so I asked Rob at Extreme Plasma who makes these things what he thought about using one of his tables as a router and in next to no time the lorry turned up in the yard with a pallet full of boxes almost everything I need was on the pallet I think but there were no instructions. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> Who needs instructions anyway? Rob usually sends these out partly or wholly pre-assembled. But he lives in England. And England's a long way from here. Plus, you'd need an enormous box to put this one in. But undaunted, Yap and I began the jigsaw. The frames bolt together easily enough. And they are seriously strong and rigid. These are built for dumping large sheets of heavy steel on, so they are easily going to keep the router bed solid. Then came the rails, except the rails weren't in the box because they need to be 10 feet long and they wouldn't fit. They're a standard size box section steel though, so I just ordered the length and we cut it up. It's crucial that the rails are parallel with the bed of the machine. We made them flush with the top of the legs. I hope that's going to work. So, you want this down. down just a little bit. There's not much space there. And then up a little bit. The X-axis gantry yeah. will run along these rails on little bearings, but it is driven by motors with little cogs on them, and the cogs engage with toothed racks that need to be attached to the rails. Um, have to 
go together. Exactly the right place, but bring it in there, yep. And that join, make sure that the join is perfect. There are two lengths of tooth rack for each side and they have to run seamlessly into each other so the motor cogs don't snag at all. Luckily Rob had thought to include a short extra piece so we could get that spot on. Now I could perhaps have welded on the racks using my stick welder but Will has a TIG welder and the skills to use it properly. So naturally I let him do that. <laughs> I just made the tea and watched carefully. We had a bit of trouble getting the galvanized metal clean enough at first, but lots and lots of grinding did the trick. Potentially this was the trickiest part of the build, but it seems to have gone all right. We won't know until the motors are running on it though. But the welds are stunning. Thanks a million, Will. Unfortunately, at this point, we realized we had a problem with one of the rails. By the time the long length of box iron had got to us, on the back of a little lorry on our bumpy Irish roads, it was no longer straight, which is kind of a big deal, really. Tell me what you got. Uh, I'd say there's three millimeters, four millimeters. That's shocking, isn't it? Too much. Yeah. I should have cut it up in the supplier's yard and brought it back it in two pieces, but I didn't. And now it's slightly banana shaped. We fixed the ends and jacked up the middle <laughs> but the ends kept slipping up the posts and it took a lot of pressure to bend the tube believe it or not it took us an hour and a half to straighten this <laughs> we had to go slowly for fear of bending it too far <laughs> what? that's um, three four two so Next time, if we need to go, we have to go more than three quarters, okay? okay. So, down again. Again, we won't know how successful we've been till the machine is working. <laughs> exactly the same as it was before. Six more millimeters. Three, four, two. So three, four, six, four millimeters. Four millimeters. Another one, another squash. Going up to three, five. Going up. Whoop. Okay, down again. Exactly the same. There are probably easier ways of doing this, but we did get there in the end. Okay, green string. How's it looking? Much, much better. Ooh. Ooh. So that's the frame and the rails up. It's so exciting. We have to make a bed for it next and get the gantry in position. Well, it's half a mil. I think that'll do. 
and think about what the router is going to sit on. Lots to do. Tune in next time for the next thrilling installment.